Hello again folks, this is the Meccano Engineering and Robotics Boeing FA-18 Super Hornet build and this to me is a rare build, a rare set all round really. Not that it's probably particularly rare, it probably is in the UK because it looks like you're going to have to get it from the US or Canada. But the whole set from start to finish is rare. I'll try and explain. Firstly, as I said in the set review video, it's not that neat looking. It's not bad and I do actually like it at the end but the thickness of the plastic parts which sort of are 99% of the build make it a little bit more chunky and where you layer parts there are a bit of a lump and bump here and there which you don't see in the instructions of course and actually having made several schoolboy errors with the tractor I took my time with this one firstly preformed canopies with Meccano aircraft like this one there's the Harrier there's the uh, Red Arrows Hawk Jet. I've never had a build that included one of those that went together easy or not fiddly in that area of the build. Bottom line is that's curved and the rest isn't. Now as you can probably see these yellow strips are a bit lumpy bumpy especially at the front. Well I did have some difficulty getting this to fit nice and fairly low down at the rear. There was an issue later on with the lengths of these strips once all together got round it in the end but basically when it comes to the canopy I started at the front and worked my way back initially this was sticking out too far and now it's a bit too long and bulging a bit there that's a little bit disappointing I can't see a way around that these two or one each side quick snaps they push into narrow obtuse angle brackets underneath with those together should push out the fuselage there to give it a little bit more form, it's a bit thin as it is. They can't because there's so much tension being pulled in, it's too stiff to force out. Now the easiest fix, although it would be fiddly to get in, would be a nut and bolt there and that would be fine, but there's not any standard bolts left at the end of the build to do that. There are a few other bolts but they're far too long, there is some nuts. Now you can't see the early stages of the build because the body works on now, but here, front more or less to the rear, with, uh, well, here to the rear, there, is a mechanoid strip, or quite a long one, and you add narrow one inch by half inch angle brackets onto those, and then, very close to those, you add the pivots with bolts and spacers, plastic nuts, and rather odd, a nut on the back of that standard nut on the back to form a traditional lock nut, really. The spacers are very close to these angle brackets, the edge. And if you leave them on there, it means that the spacers will be alongside the strip, but not level with the strip, causing misalignment. So make sure that the spacers aren't touching those angle brackets. Now, we haven't crashed, <laughs> although I'm sure I will. Bad points, and bad is probably overstated, but for the want of a slightly longer bolts and perhaps a couple of nuts. The pivots for the wheels are poor. They're just bolted on with a plastic nut there causing the lock nut because the plastic nut doesn't come undone and as long as you're careful with using those they are pretty good and they save quite a bit of space and they can get into parts that uh, of a build that they some of the nylock nuts the early ones are quite chunky so they're not bad for that sort of thing. They're not as tough obviously. These should have been a stud with a lock nut on the end, a capsulated nut or plastic nut on the end, giving it a far better pivot. The way they are now, all the weight goes on to that pivot and they are not that much weight, although it is fairly heavy for what is all, nearly all plastic. These don't run so good because of that and the same with the front, the front's probably worse. The whole thing pivots instead of just the wheel on a stub axle, so that's quite poor and arguably probably one of the poorest things but what is weird not that there's anything wrong with it and in some ways it's a good thing let's hope this focuses can you see just there we've got a plastic nut which forms a lock nut on its own like uh, the wheels here and here and same with the front wheel just there but what they've also done and maybe it's because it's very difficult to get at this with the bodywork on, although not impossible. In the instructions it shows you to put on a standard nut to form a proper traditional lock nut, which I think is quite weird. Nothing wrong with it, but uh, certainly a bit 
odd. As I said with the canopy, it was awkward. Not that there was anything wrong with the nose, which all come at the same time the way I did it. But you are shown to use a 9mm bolt here, which looks really messy, sticking out the end there. And as you can see, I've used a standard bolt, which is properly long enough, it almost fits flush with the end of the bolt, which is a nicer finish altogether, really. Again, you can see the board in here, really, but I don't know what... I've looked and looked and looked, as I said, with the issues that I caused myself with the tractor build. When I had a little bit of difficulty in sorting something out, I just left it and then went back to it, or just sat down and had a good look at the instruction book and made sure before I did anything else. But there was a problem with these strips. These odd shaped strips, I'm going to call them paddle strips because they look like a paddle or an oar. In the instructions they were shown overlapping one aisle further up, which made them too short. They didn't line up and after much fiddling I moved it back one aisle which makes them slightly too long and there is a slight bit of bunching there. This is probably transferred more to here because the canopy doesn't fit as low as it perhaps ought to. Now, I did make mistakes, but in my defence this time, they weren't my fault, exactly. After the self-induced problems I had with the tractor build, I took my time with this and made sure. No point carrying on. You may as well just stop and check. Now, the blue on this plane, perhaps in this video, looks quite light. That's because there's seven light sources shining at it. But that blue in the instruction book is very dark indeed. And plenty of places at the front and at the rear and to do with the wings, you can't see where some of the holes are and therefore you can't really see which bolts go where or it makes it very difficult to do, decipher whether it's like a is there a, a one hole spacing say there or is it, or is it two uh, it's very clustered due to the size of the models that are included in each stage or the amount of the model that is included in each stage so you have to take your time there the lighting I was building this mostly was better than the tractor build lighting so it made me think a little bit more and stop a little bit more thinking right stop doubting myself and get on with it now the layering of the parts is perhaps more of an issue with this build than anything else using the chunky plastic flexible parts these days and it's not shown at all which you, you probably couldn't really in the instructions and you can see here now I dare say that's supposed to be flat but it's quite a jump and uh, it's very awkward to get all these in the right position and the right angles because you can see there's a lot of triangular parts and there's quite a bit of adjustment allowed for really I suppose but it's still a bit messy around here uh, certainly at the nose and then around here it's a little bit messy a lot of adjustment here to try and get the canopy to sit right and lower. I would argue that you don't really need these obtuse angle brackets here. To be honest, just removing those, I think you you would be fine with the canopy and the cockpit assembly holding in place nicely there. Just by these bolts here holding these parts and you've got these strips pulling down on the canopy because there are brackets in the canopy that these bolts go through. So you could probably get a better finish at the rear by removing those. Probably allow you to come down a little bit lower. Towards the end of the build, you start putting the sides of the engines on what would be the engines or the side of there and the air intakes now here you can see the end of what is a corner bracket although it is a plastic one on the opposite side you'll note in the instructions at least in my book anyway that that part is shown the incorrect orientation so if you carried on with the build that pointed corner there or squared off uh, corner really would be down at this end leaving a gap there a lot of quick snaps in this build, nowhere near the same amount of nuts and bolts, but a fair few. And they do have their uses, as if folks have seen my uh, Forest Rover build with the lights on that, they look a lot more in proportion than using small plastic spacers and bolts to hold them on to represent lights. For an aircraft, they do make things look a little bit smoother, I, I suppose. They're probably about half the height, the head's probably half the height of a, of a bolt, and it does make the build a little bit quicker. That said, the longer ones, that's the uh, about 13 and 3 quarter mil, and they've 
generally got a nut or allen bolt socket head to them to give them a similar representation and of course you can tell the difference between the two then those are really stiff and I had the right game getting them through some plastic parts which in some cases there's three layered together and it was very difficult of course you're a kid doing it without adult assistance with that really to be honest very difficult and nearly always at the end of a part as well right at the end of a couple of strips which meant you've got nothing really to hold on the one hand uh, the other hand's fine but you, you've got nothing really to hold very awkward to get them out as well I use what I've been using for a, well since they come out really which is the box end of the spanner and sliding that underneath them like a fork and pulling but they took some pulling to get out there's one thing I've realised on this more than more than the Boeing airliner really the 787 Dreamliner and that is what they look like underneath look how ugly that is fine on the top as you can see features wise not a great deal but you do have moving undercarriage you've seen me move the rear already there you go they can be moved separately and they can be folded almost right in there like that same with the front although it probably isn't quite as inobtrusive I don't know which way it goes on the real thing but you can go like that obviously that looks pretty ugly that way so I would suggest that that way is the better way you've got folding wing tips uh, not assisted by a slightly deformed hinge but as I said in the set review those two hinges are about three quid and if you're an expert on or you don't have to be an expert but just know more about the Super Hornets than I do, the FA-18s. I presume these hold to give more room on an aircraft carrier. Don't know. I'm more of a Spitfire person, a Lancaster, than a jet person I suppose. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with some of the modern jets, they're all very interesting stuff but that's more my cup of tea you might say. Build time seemed like days. I think that was because of me stopping more and checking more often than even on, on a really good build day I wouldn't check that much and I just go with the flow. Sometimes you can trip yourself up by going on with the build saying oh this is good this is flowing well and you're not realising you're making mistakes as you go along and of course it's a process isn't it from start to finish from stage one to stage I don't know 25 or something and of course if you make a mistake early on that mistake can transfer all the way through but of course I don't count that waiting time if you like that pause time I'll try and stop the clock as it were within a minute or two I mean it it's exactly spot on stopwatch timings but you know it gives you a good idea now this build on the box said uh, I think it was one and a half to three hours intermediate for me it was three hours 23 minutes it felt a lot longer than that but earlier in the video right at the start I said that this was for me a rare build I don't mean in value or anything like that you build something and it's a dog's dinner of a build for whatever reason or you're having a lot of issues because the instructions are no good and the end result you perhaps at best of just you know it's okay or something or if it's really bad you don't even bother continuing with it when I say this is rare it's because I actually like the end result yes it's got 99 probably 0.9% plastic part but it's a decent size nice looking perhaps a bit weird looking as I said before I tell you tell us, should we say uniform as the one made by a chap with the flexible metal parts from the 60s and 70s in yellow and I think this is is this a is it the Blue Angels aerial acrobatic team of the US Navy is it don't know if you know let me know now perhaps I should do this more often on perhaps younger builders or those who have just got into it, you may not be young. Maybe don't know what a Meccano screwdriver is, or maybe not seen one. There's several versions of it, uh, all sorts actually. But here's one you get in like an army multi-kit from the 1970s, for example. That's about 7 inches long. Here is a very latest modern Meccano spanner that come from this set. To give you an idea of the size. Now that spanner is probably, what, 3 inches long? So you can see that it's over a foot long and a wingspan of about ooh, eight to nine inches and it's pretty good and we'll be going into eventually after this video has been published and it's been displayed live at a show whenever that will be it will go up on my ceiling with all the other aircraft and flying and space related models